All right, everyone, so I wanted to make a video today because it's been th essentially three years since my wife and I quit our day jobs and have been living off real estate income and dividend income, as well as some other types of passive income. Um, never selling the Bitcoin, but always buying. But I want to make this video because it's in a follow-up to a video I made last year regarding rental properties. And you know, I've been investing in real estate since 2016. And there's been a lot of changes in the real estate market, but also been a ton of changes uh, in the way we handle our real estate. So I just wanna get right to this. Uh, if you guys do get values, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Now, when it comes to real estate income, one thing you guys need to understand, and this is something that nobody talks about, or at least not enough people talk about, I don't see it out there often, is that cash flow on rental properties fluctuates almost every single month. It's very rare that you have a consistent $1,000 per month coming off a rental property. The reason for that is because a million, right? There's, you can have a tenant not pay, you can have a tenant fall behind, you can have a maintenance and repair, you can have a pest control issue, you can have, uh, you know, maybe you need a new replacement for the boiler, maybe you need a new window. There's so many things that go wrong with real estate. And even when you account for repairs and maintenance and capex and pest control, there always seems to be something that you forget about. And I think that over the last eight, nine years since we've been investing in real estate, we've really um, come across just about everything to the point where we are now probably officially putting uh, the right am amounts of money aside, accounting for most things. And this is something that you really truly only learn when you own your building and you own it for a couple of years. So for example, last year we were spending about on this one particular property, which is a five unit, about $225 a month we were tucking away for maintenance and repairs, which we equivalented to be about 5% or so of the gross monthly rent. It was in and around that number. But what ended up happening was as we now did our year end taxes and we're going through all the numbers and something that we're gonna improve going forward, again, you learn this stuff as you go, is that we really should have been putting about seven or 8% of gross monthly rent towards this maintenance and repairs because you think that that's the price today, but by the time this thing happens, you know what? And by the time you actually have to get it done, if it's a certain thing, like a hot water tank, for example, uh, those always tend to go at the worst times, right? And you're gonna pay an extra hundred bucks just to get the maintenance person there within a couple hours to replace it. That's just one example. So with rental income, what I like to suggest is that if your plan is to reach financial independence, because this channel is all about financial freedom, financial independence, if, if you're trying to reach that by investing in real estate, I think personally, it's still the fastest and safest way to do so. You ideally want to make sure that you are anticipating for most things. And let's say that you want to try and replace $5,000 a month of monthly income at your day job. Me personally, looking back, it prob and this is why I, I, I made sure I had more than that coming in, You know, I would still suggest that you get to 6,500, 7,000 or even more a month coming in before you hang up your nine to five job because you're gonna go through times, everyone, where everything goes wrong at once. Like over the last six months, I wanna say we've probably spent like $20,000 just on three buildings, that three particular buildings, just on either evictions, um, maintenance issues, some cosmetic renovations, pest control, you know, just stuff like this, that um, thank God we have always made sure that we put enough money aside and make sure we always have cash cushions. That's another thing. Where, you know, when it comes to dividend income, um, for the most part, dividend income or distribution income, if you invest like me into cover call ETFs with kind of a growth strategy, you really do get consistent payouts month over month over month. And there might be times, for example, like when my Tesla yield shares went from paying 40 
cent distribution a month down to 30, obviously that was a big hit of a couple hundred dollars a month. But all the other uh, distributions or the other companies I own, their distributions increased or stayed the same, right? And the share price continues to go up. So there's more of a chance for those to raise their dividends. And for me, I'm a Tesla bull, so I think that it's gonna recover. But that's that's a different topic. But when it comes to dividends, you know, they're a lot more consistent than rental income. So what we've designed in our financial freedom lifestyle portfolio is kind of the best of both worlds. You know, we we mainly focus, majority of our net worth is focused on real estate. Again, I believe it's one of the best investments out there. Honestly, I think the second best investment anyone can make right now is Bitcoin, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to pump it. I've been investing in it since 2016 and it's been the best performer by far. But rather you like it or not, I think most people understand that real estate and stocks are probably the way to go and what they're what they're able to understand and comprehend. So I still think that, you know, real estate is the is the best investment because you get to use leverage, you get tax incentives, you get depreciation and you get cash flow. With dividends, you get appreciation and cash flow. You might get some tax incentives depending on the country you live in, but it's mainly just appreciation in the share price and then cash flow from the distributions and dividends. But when you blend these two together, that's really, I find, where you get this, this fantastic kind of ability to really enjoy life more consistently. Let me get into this. So before when we were mainly focused on real estate, there would be months where, like I said, that you're bringing in eight, nine, ten thousand dollars a month in cash flow, but then you have months where you're bringing in five, six, seven, right? And that three thousand uh, dollars, depending what cycle you're in in your lifestyle or whatever it is, you might have other things going on, uh, maintenance repairs on your car or, or, God forbid, a health crisis. You know that could really jeopardize your your ability to enjoy life. But if you can offset some of that some of those swings in your cash flow by investing in things like dividends, man, it really just adds a little bit more of security. And on top of that, you know, you can do private lending, which is another way to earn passive income. You can stake certain types of cryptos that gives you another sort of passive income. And you can start building up these passive income streams slowly but steadily using your real estate. So I've talked about this at length before on my YouTube channel. And again, I, I don't know what to coin this strategy but uh, it's something that I don't hear a lot of people talking about because mainly people you see online, they're real estate investors, they're crypto investors, or they're stock investors. They're not dabble in all three. And it's good that you're not an expert in all three, but it's good to be knowledgeable in all three. So I would like to say I'm an expert in real estate. I fully 100% understand Bitcoin, but solely Bitcoin. And then I think I have a pretty good understanding of the stock market. That's the way I look at it. But if you can become an expert at real estate, you can use all those great incentives, the cash flow, the depreciation, the tax write-offs, and the leverage. So for example, you know, we take equity out of properties that still continue to cash flow every single month. The debt gets paid down, we get depreciation, we get tax write-offs, but we get to pull out tax-free equity and we get to take that money and we can deploy it into more real estate, but then we also take a portion and we invest it into things like dividend paying stocks and cover call ETFs, as well as maybe some private lending and maybe some more Bitcoin. So then all these sort of assets start paying you and you start getting a nice little sense of diversification. But you got to understand that you have to be good at one thing first and then you diversify, right? I'm a big believer that just focus on one thing, get rich in that asset class, and then you can slowly start diversifying a little bit. And again, what this does, the strategy is you're able to take from something you're good at, like real estate, tax-free income and debt, and you're able to put it into dividend paying ETFs and stocks, where then you can use those dividends to live, right? So you don't even have to touch the real estate. You can just let the cash flow build up every single month to ensure that you have more than enough to take care of renovations, more than enough to take care of repairs, and more you get, you can use that money for a future down payment and you can use your dividend paying stocks that generally, if you pick them right and you understand what you're doing, they'll continue to appreciate 
with the same amount as maybe inflation and currency debasement, but you can actually use those dividends to live. So I think it's a fantastic strategy. I don't know what to call this strategy, but it's one of my all-time favorite ones. And you know, while you're doing all that, always just buy a little bit of Bitcoin and keep it safe. Keep it off off the exchanges, keep it in a cold hardware wallet. Guys, I'm just I'm not gonna go into detail about this, but it's just it's good to own at least a little bit. Don't go broke buying it. I'm not saying that, but it is just good to own some. And personally, I think that you cannot own enough of it, but that's just me. You guys will have to wait and see. But let me know if uh, you guys like this strategy or what I should call this strategy. And if you are personally either focused on real estate right now, crypto or dividends. All right, guys, hope you got value. Take care.